back to my channel welcome oh I, I, wow guys i just said welcome back to my channel it's actually supposed to be welcome back to our channel but you know uh we're here we're here uh welcome back to our channel guys welcome back to the vix um yes guys this week i'm doing um another law related video uh i'm actually enjoying these uh law related videos more than i thought i would because you know what I remember when we started the channel, I was going to have like a little bit of a gutting. I was going to have like a segment where I would deal with law related stuff, but not to the extent that I think I'm doing it now. But I'm doing it now because I think, you know, a lot of people have been um, asking me about. Ah, I've always wanted to say that a lot of people have been asking me about. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, no, but I, I have been getting a couple of requests from uh, especially law students. For example, with the Concord video, people have been asking me uh, regarding, you know, applying at the Concord. How does that work? Well, basically just follow up questions from the actual video, right? Because we, we explained in a lot of detail how to apply. But I've been getting uh, this, this particular video I'm doing because I've gotten a couple of requests from people asking regarding how my, like my law my law school journey, you know, how I got into a big five firm and just taking you through what that looks like. So this, so this video, <laughs> so this video is going to be about, um, uh, taking you guys through, uh, my journey of becoming, um, I suppose a candidate attorney at a big five law firm. Uh, but I think this, this, it, it's not just about being a candidate attorney at a big five firm, it's just, it will, I think it will be applicable to just the process of getting or even securing articles, you know, so that this, this will be what the video is about, right? Just securing articles at a firm, what I did, uh, I would say do's and don'ts, you know, uh, but I'll just tell you about my experience and then you'll just pick up what is relevant for you, right? Sharp. So, okay. Let's start off with, uh, so, uh, you know, guys, I think I've mentioned this before in, in, in the past videos, Kuti, Mina, I've always wanted to be a lawyer. Like I've always wanted to be a lawyer from a very young age, you know, as a little girl, they'd be like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I'd be like, no, nah, I want to be a lawyer. I didn't even know what that even meant at the time, you know, but I always wanted to be a lawyer. I've always wanted to, to do, so. I knew that I, I, I belonged in the legal field. Right. And so, um, I didn't have career struggles in varsity, you know, I didn't have, you know, when we do, you know how, when you do those career things, go, go, go university where they, they, where you check which career you need to be studying. No, I didn't, I did those things, but I already knew what I wanted to do. But I suppose I think the struggle of knowing what I wanted to do was because I also had to convince my parents, you know, because, uh, my dad didn't really support, oh, well, my mom and my dad didn't really support, uh, the, the 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 dream of wanting to be a lawyer i think it's because maybe for example my mom she knew lawyers and she was like lawyers are so poor like how am i chile that you're gonna be poor you know so i think it came from a concern in that sense Jorge, i think at the time uh there were a lot of people that were studying law and that wanted to be lawyers and it was just like the field was so oversaturated and i think it really i think it still is you know and so that was the concern coming from my parents and i think at, at the time also there were a lot of uh like science was you know emerging and technology and they wanted me to get into those things and i think at some point I did want to do those things, but I was like, you know what, no, I need to follow what I've always wanted to do, I need to follow my passion and do this, because I know, Wuti, only if you follow your passion, guys, I, not for now, I believe that if you follow your passion, like, everything else will just fall into place, but anyway, so, I've always wanted to do it, and so, when I arrived in, in, in my grade 11 year, right, like, you know how your grade 11 marks you use those to apply in varsity, um, I was always one of those students that were very average in 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 high school. Like I was sixty percent, seventy percent at most. I was not an A student. I was not a top ten student. I was just a student that was pushing just to you know get in. You know, I wasn't below average, but I wasn't I wasn't an A student as well. I was just those ones in the middle. You know, so. Grade 11 was a very important year. Obviously, you need to kind of secure the right marks in order for you to get into a good university. So I did that. I mean, my marks were not, they were not amazing. I didn't get 90s, but I think 
I averaged like maybe more 65, 70 at most, something like that, right? So that was me and um, in grade grade 11, right? So grade 11 happened and then my matric when after I got my grade 11 marks, they were pretty good. I, I, I was able to then get into, uh, to apply with those. And so um, I applied. So I applied at three universities. No, I'm lying. I applied at two universities. I applied at WITS and I applied at um, UP, right? So what I applied for at those universities, I applied for a BA law, a BCom law and an LLB. So I applied for all three. Right. And I think at the time I applied for all three because you, you can't just apply for LLB. Right. You have to. I think at the time at UP, I literally had just written down LLB. And then when my dad took the application, they were like, no, you need to put two other study options. Then he just put in BCom and BA. Right. But at first I, I had applied for all three. Right. Sharp. So after applying, uh, then you receive the provisional acceptance thing, right? So Sharp, I had received that provisional acceptance, so I was I was en route to to either doing one or the three, right? Then what I did in my matric year, I can't remember how I found out about this thing, Yako Norton Rose. There's this there's this thing, it's called a scholar day at Norton Rose, ne? And basically it was a group of a group of varsity students that I think it it was I'm not even sure if it was uh just matrix at the time but i can't i think it was just matrix i'm not sure but there was this thing called uh, a scholar day on Rose, rules right? and it basically exposes uh high school students who want to be lawyers to the field like hey guys if you want to be a lawyer this is what it looks like this is what you need to apply for in universities things like that so i went to the scholar day and i think i had found out about it through my mom who had heard it from her friend or something like that but anyway i registered for the scholar day and i then i then i got in i don't even think there were any requirements like marks i can't remember but i remember i, I managed to go to the norton rose scholar day it's a it was one day scholar day guys i think that was the day i was like mm -mm, never 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 i am going to be a lawyer you know it was just you know in my it, i think throughout this wanting to be a lawyer thing I didn't know what it looked like, you know, I didn't know, I just knew the court side of it, Honali advocate, Honali attorney, Honali this, Honali that, because obviously, you know, in high school, you have to kind of present about the career that you want to do. So I, I, I knew it from that uh, perspective, you know, I didn't know there was a whole side of law that was corporate and, you know, with big, massive firms in Santon, you know what I mean? And it opened my eyes to, to seeing, oh, yo, okay, you know, this, there, there is a possibility to 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 make money in this field it was never about money but i think for me i could then go back to my parents and say actually no the firm that i went to but for thing they look like they're living their best lives you know what i mean i could i could say that and i could present that to my dad say support this dream i really want to do this and i know that if you allow me to do this i'm going to do i'm going to give it my all i'm going to do my best i'm not going to try to be an average lawyer right and so that's that's what I did. That that scholar day really opened my eyes. We were exposed to candidate attorneys, directors, everything. You know, they informed us about all our options, about where to study, what to study, what they look for in their candidates. You know, that they look for really great students. They look for students that that uh, that have really great marks. So, in going into in leaving my matric year and going into varsity, I had this vision of the kind of place I wanted to work at. And I knew that getting into that place was not going to be possible with average marks or just an, or just being an average student, right? And so um, one thing that I really appreciated about the Norton Rose experience was because I didn't know what the difference between a BA, BCom, LLB was. All I knew that I, is that I wanted to be a lawyer and I wanted, and I knew that the course to being a lawyer was LLB. But when I got there, they, they told us the differences of, I mean, not in that de much detail, but we did know, okay, PA, this is what you do in a BA, BCom, this is what you do, LLB. And the reason, the main reason why I did a BA was because I, I they, 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 at Norton Rose, they did inform us that they preferred candidates that had a BA and an LLB, right? So the five-year stream, they preferred that. And so... 
I don't think what they were saying is that they're not going to take people with LLBs. I don't think that was what they're saying. I think for them, it was just that maybe you came as a holistic person because you had an undergraduate degree that whether it was a BCom or, uh, or a BA, right? So I think because of that, and I was like, I was attracted to the idea of, oh, okay, two degrees in five years instead of one degree in four years. Why not? You know? So I did a, I did a BA uh become i was like guys you know what i i wasn't as i said to you i wasn't an a student i didn't do accounting in high school uh so when i saw accounting on the list of subjects in my first year i was like no i'm not doing it i just want i don't want to be uh, stressed about accounting i didn't do it in high school no so i think i was attracted to a ba because of that and because i think largely because i really liked reading and shame i don't want to lie to you now i loved my my ba degree i enjoyed it it was a great degree i would recommend it i loved it right so that's what i did yeah? so within my ba degree what i did so there's so there was there was like a thousand subjects to choose from i'm exaggerating but there were a lot of subjects to choose from in the undergrad right so what i did i Obviously, you have to do the law courses if you're going to do a BA law. So I did the obvious law courses. And then my first year, I did uh, psychology. And then I did uh, international relations, which I hated. And then I did uh, economic concepts. Economic concepts was a, was a subject or a module from the BCom uh, faculties. But it, was, it wasn't as hectic and intense as economics. I did economic concepts because I enjoyed economics in high school, so it was fun. I liked it. It was a it was a it was a fun course to do, right? And then what happens is that those three subjects you drop them as the years go by. So by the time you get to third year, you only have one BA subject and then all your other law modules, right? Then in my third year, I had I majored in psychology and then I majored in law. So my law related subjects in my third year were. I think it was criminal law and contract. I'm not sure. I think it, it could have, I, 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 might, I might have had another one, but I remember it being criminal law and contract. I, I'm not sure if I did const maybe, constitutional law. I might have, I'm not sure. So those were my majors in my third year. And then sharp, uh, that, was, that was the BA. So in terms of how I did, like with, in terms of my, my, my marks, Guys, my, my varsity, my, my varsity marks, I think if my teachers in high school saw my varsity marks, they would be like, I was on drugs or something. Like, there was no way. Like, I really, really, really did well. I did well. And I think the reason why I did so well was because I had this vision of notes and rules. I want to go to notes and rules. I want to go to notes and rules. I need to be in a big five. You know, it, it was in my head. And I knew that I needed to work hard. I knew that. And so, um, so that, so when, so... My marks were really good. They were really, really good. And in my first year, I think I did, I think I did, so I did the three BA courses and then I did three other law courses. And out of all those law courses, I literally got five distinctions for out of the six. So you can imagine, it was like, my mom was just like, ah, when, when are you doing something? Yeah, what's the halang? But I think it was really because I had a plan. I, I really wanted to, 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 to make it. I wanted to also prove my parents wrong that actually lawyers can have money. Not that I have money. I don't have money just yet. But I do think that uh, uh, heading to a big five law firm gives you uh, a lot more opportunities than maybe going to a smaller firm that uh, won't pay you as much as a big five firm would, right? So I did well. Uh, then... Second year, second year was a bit rough, guys. But my second year was a bit rough because your second year, I thought I was smart. I thought, you know, I'm an A student. Yo, I can do this live thing. And then I started getting interested in boys. Ooh, varsity boys. Yeah, varsity boys always showed me flames, guys. I started getting interested in boys and I was like, yeah, I'm smart. You know, I can do both. I can juggle. And my first semester happened and I almost failed constitutional law. Mudimwaka. That was the biggest wake up call of my entire varsity experience. Because literally I was on the verge. Like I think I had gotten, guys no, I probably got like 49.5. I needed to like go to the, to, the, to the dean of students be like, please, I can't fail. I can't fail this course. And somehow I got to 51% because I had a remark or whatever. So that was a, that was a major wake up call because 
I had moved from six distinctions, I mean five distinctions, to almost failing a course in the in the following semester. So it was a, a bit of a, yay, you need to wake up. And I did, I did. Second semester happened, my marks went up again because I was no longer interested in boys. I was like, boys are bad. I don't want boys. I don't want them. And so that happened. And then, uh, my, so my second, my, at the, towards the end of my second year, I was, I was, I was getting back to, to TD, you know? And so third year came, third year was my final year, BA. And I was like, okay, cool. This is my final year. Could I cum laude? Could I not cum laude? Let me find out from, from, from faculty. Yo, guys. Then I saw, okay, if, I think at Vits, to cum laude, you needed to get an average of about 75% for, so that's, I get it, guys, you know, distinction is 75% in varsity because varsity is hard. It's not 80. So you needed to get an average of about 75% for all your year, for, for like cumulative, cumulatively for all the three years. So, uh, my second year was a bit rough, but I managed to, to, to get to the 75 because, uh, as much as I almost failed that subject, uh, the others were not too bad. Right. Then my third year, I was like, okay, this is actually possible. I can do this, you know? So third year I did not play. I was like, I'm glad I, I don't want, I don't want anything. I'm going to work. You know, so third year I did really well again. I did really well, and uh, when the year ended, I didn't know about the the cum laude until I graduated in my fourth year. So I guess you know you graduate the following year. So I graduated and I was like, yes, I'm happy. You know, th one degree down, two to go. And then just before my graduation, you get a graduation list that vets that says to you, okay, a eh, eh, you graduating on this day. Ah, as I'm scrolling through the graduation list, guys. Ah! And Timothy was like, I wanna follow my name. I wanna follow next to my name. Hooray! With distinction. You should, I, I don't know if I cried or I jumped or I... But I was very happy. I was very happy because, you know what? I had worked hard. I did work hard. And that's, that was like the, 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 okay, you're doing well moment. You know what I mean? And I think throughout my fourth year my fifth year i did well i did I, I continued to push i continued to make sure that i was pushing you know this academic life but uh, and and i did so and i did so and hence even my second year i mean my fourth year and my fifth year i did really well and subsequently graduated cum laude again hey <laughs> anyway yeah so that's what happened that was my journey as my, 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 my academic journey, but I, I, I must emphasize that guys, you mustn't, it's not just about marks. Marks are very important in varsity, especially uh, depending on the degree that you're doing. You know, some people, whether they get 60 or they get 80, they'll get the job like doctors. You know what I mean? All you need is a 60. Even if you get 60 throughout your entire degree, you're going to get an internship with us as lawyers, guys, you need to push, you know, in order to make sure, okay, you know what I mean? You're pushing, you're pushing because uh, average is just not gonna cut it you know there's just so many of us that leave university every year there's so many final year students every year that leave university and if you're not if your marks are not speaking for you in a room full of people and you're not there then you just you just won't get into that room so that was my academic journey so that that's one thing i always tell people you need to push you need to work hard and your marks need to speak for you right however I am going to talk about a very important point that I think a lot of students just miss. They, you just, you know, it's like, I don't want to say people ignore it or people don't take it seriously, but applying for vacation work, guys, that is something that I will overemphasize until I get to be near. Like, it's so, so, so important to apply for VAC work. So what I did, I started applying for VAC work in my second year of varsity i was informed Guti, it was a little bit early to apply um that uh, so soon right but i did it anyway because i was just like i just want to get in the door and because of hope not was my my right creme de la creme of a law firm that i wanted to go to i started there started not in rose and uh guys to be honest just just to be honest fully that was not a great uh, experience for me and not because of notes and rules as a firm. The firm is great. I st like for not, it's literally still one of the, my favorite law firms, you know, I think it's a great firm, but I think honestly, I should have taken the advice of not applying 
so early you know i was very young in my legal career i had not done a lot of law courses number one and so when i got to vac to the vac program i didn't know a lot i really didn't know a lot you know and i was there with st uh, students that had you know that were in like their third year their final year so they were like literally spitting balimu 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 another time kente in kente introduction to law and family law failure you know so it wasn't I didn't have a lot of a lot of law background courses, you know what I mean? So that was the one thing that I that I think I should have waited a little bit. Maybe started doing them in about third year. But anyway, but the experience of as uh, of Norton Rose is a firm, an amazing firm, a great firm. Um yeah, I I thought it was a great firm. And just to take you through the VAC program, the VAC program is two weeks at Norton Rose. I think it's the longest. Uh a lot of firms now do it for one week. But they do it for two weeks. Uh, so what they do is that in a VAG program, you get allocated to a specific team. And so you work with the team throughout. But if you don't work with them full time because you're doing other stuff. You like They're taking you to like the Concord. You know, they're taking you to tours, things like that. They're informing you about uh, the different teams. So there's a lot of like... As much as there's a lot of interaction with the team that you're in, there's also a lot of um, things that you do outside of that team. And it was a very beautiful experience. I loved it. And you also get paid. I mean, you get it's not a lot, but like you, you get paid. Not for not, I, I think at the time, I can't remember. It was a couple of thousands. Not even, I don't think it was more than 3,000. I can't remember the, the price exactly. But as a student, guys, that's a lot of money. Like not, even if I'm below 1,000, I would have been fine with that. You know what I mean? So that was... That experience was really great, but it was a tough experience for me because, I, as I said to you, I wasn't very informed in terms of my legal courses, things like that. And so, uh, I don't think I did well in that VAG fake, fake program. And I mean, I didn't do well because I didn't get in. They didn't sign me. And so, that was a bummer because I loved the firm. I wanted to. It was my dream. I wanted to be at Norton Rose. But that happened, right? And I was like, okay, let me not apply. I didn't apply in my second year again. I was like, you know what? Let me just wait. Let me just do second year. Let me relax. Third year, I was like, hey, let me go back into applying. You know, let's do this thing. I need to, I need to get the ball rolling again. I applied at Bowman's, at Bowman's, and then I applied at Worksman's. Right? I got accepted into both programs, and I, as I, as as I go back, I think one of the reasons of getting accepted into those programs was obviously because of my marks. My, as I said to you, my marks will speak for you, and I accept. I got accepted. And I think Worksman's, Worksman's might have been two weeks as well. Yeah, two weeks, but Bowman's was one week, right? And so um, I did in my June holiday period in, in my third year. That's all I did. I did VAC the whole period. Literally, I think I did three weeks of VAC and then I went back to varsity. Literally, because that's all I did the whole, the whole, um, the whole break, right? And so Worksman's was, Worksman's, I think, uh... I not you know what let me actually just say it like this i think that all the big firms they do what i experienced in my vac is that they do the same work they you know they get the high-end client all of them they all get the high the, the high-end clients you know so literally what you need to 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 in the experience of the vac you need to see if you can fit in into the culture you know, that's the word that they love to use. The culture of the law firm. So, um, I, 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 Worksman's was good. Also, I enjoyed it. Great people. Uh, and I didn't get in. That was my second no. And I was like, my God, what am I doing wrong? You know? But good Worksman's, guys. I don't want to lie. Guys, let me just tell you. Worksman's, my interview was bad. Yo, guys, I don't know if I didn't prepare for that interview. But it was just like, when I left, I was like, I'm not getting signed here. This ain't happening, right? And so my interview wasn't great. So I was also demotivated. And when the letter said, you're not getting signed, oh, I knew because I was like, I, that interview, I flopped, you know. Then I was like, okay, Bowman's, you know, ish, I need to do what at Bowman's. Guys, I think I found out about the worksman's no while I was doing my VAG program at, at Bowman's. So I imagine, you know, you, you're still in this, 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 this thing and now you, you you're seeing oh, someone else is saying no to you then you're thinking oh guys this is basically my last chance from the opportunities i've been given so it was it was it, it motivated me though it motivated me to just to kill it to kill it at bowman's because i didn't have a choice you know 
And so, uh, because the Bowman's one was a week long, it just went, it, it felt like it went by so quickly. And it literally, we did that. Um, uh, it was, it was, it was, it was good. I really, really enjoyed the Bowman's one as well. Great people, just a great environment. So how the Bowman's VAG program at the time, well, I'm not sure if it's the same way now, how it worked at the time, is that we did a, we did a week program and then if you if they're happy with you in the VAG program, then you do a two-day selection day. They'll tell you when that happens, right? And apparently, from what I've been told and from my experience, the selection day is tough. It is not easy. It's like grill, grill, grill for two days straight. And it was tough. You know, it's a lot of interviews. I think we did like, we have an interview on the first day. We have an, uh, an interview on the second day. And the interview on the first day was very... It was, no, mine was quite chilled. I think it's different for different people. Mine was chilled, uh, you know, they're asking about me about my, my reason for choosing law, my family life, those kinds of things, nothing hectic. The second interview on the second day was the one that was tough. You know, you get there and they're like, I, now we know everything about you. Let's talk about the law, you know. But I remember thinking to myself, interview Ena. That's what I thought to myself, oh, I have to, I have to. And I remember the first question that they threw at me. I was like, come, 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 come. And yeah, that interview, Sham. Like after I left that interview, I was like, you know what, girl? High five to you. High five to you, baby girl. And uh, they asked me a lot of low related questions, but it was based on the subjects that I had done in university. So I think I had done at the time, but my contract, but my criminal law, but my, you know? So I got asked those kind of questions, right? And uh, I loved it. I enjoyed the interview. I enjoyed the the, the, the performance experience. It was just an amazing experience. I loved it. And so I had done three VAG programs at the time. And they opened my eyes. They opened my eyes, but also they motivated me to just continue, you know, to say, okay, I'm making the right decision with this career. I really felt that I was. And uh, guys, I remember the day I left Bowman's after the VAG, I mean, after the selection day, I think it was a Wednesday or a Thursday, Katamaya. I just remember asking my mom to pray, her, Mama, I can't take another no. I really can't. I, I need, I need a yes. I need somebody to say, to acknowledge that, okay, you're doing it, you know? And I just remember feeling so demotivated, just thinking, I don't know, what if they say no, what am I going to do? What am I doing wrong? Because that's what you ask yourself, what am I doing wrong? And we prayed with my mom and I left. Literally the same evening, I got a call from a number that I didn't know. Um, hello, hello, who's this? This lady, she's like, hi, TD, uh, it's interviewing from Bowman's. I'm like, oh my God, why did I leave at Bowman's? She's like, TD, listen, baby girl. Listen, baby girl. You did the things. Yes! I did the things. What does that mean? <laughs> like, what does that mean? And she's like, listen, you know what? You did well. You, we are happy with your performance and Bowman's would like to sign you. Guys, I cried. I literally cried. I cried. I was like, God. It was like, God was listening. I can't take another no. And God was like, you don't have to. You don't have to take another no. Because girl, your yes is coming. You know what I mean? And that's what happened. And I and I got my yes. Um, and that's it. That's how I got signed. Literally, I think a week later, I was signing documents. I was like, yes. You know, just the feeling of knowing, you see, you're employed even before you finish your first degree, you know, I was employed in 20, in 20, when did I sign? 2014. And I finished my degree in 2016, guys. So that can only be the grace of God. But that just shows you how important it is to start early. Yes, you'll get no's, but you will get a yes. You will get someone who like you, you know. So yes, guys, I think that's, that's, that's literally how I got into a big five law firm. I hope this video was um, interesting, but mostly informative um, and that it, it kind of provided you with some sort of understanding of the process that you that you can follow as, as, as an aspiring legal mind. And I hope that it, it, it provided you with some sort of information on on your way forward, you know. Um, but, you know, I think I think I've, I've said it out quite nicely that 
you know as much as more than anything you this career is there's a lot of us there's a lot of us there's there's so many of us i remember in my final year i think there were over 400 law students and and if you just ask yourself if you're sitting in a class of 400 law students and there's like so many law firms that can take so many people what sets you apart that's what you really need to ask yourself what sets you apart and marks will will get you in but you need more than marks you need to be a well-rounded individual i did more more than more than academics i was busy in varsity i was in housecom my third year and my final my final year of my ba i did housecom you know i was busy i was i was always involved i tutored i did a lot you know so as much as your marks will get you in you really need to show that you're a holistic well-rounded individual because that's also important you know there's no point in being a 90 percent student but you don't even have a personality to have an engagement with a director you know what i mean that's important as well so um yeah so i think that that i think this video is is will provide you with that kind of information and i really hope that uh it will help you in your in, in whether so whether you are a law student that is interested in getting to uh, getting articles or you are finished you know with your varsity um studies and you're looking for a job i really hope that this video will be informative and will provide you with uh, some sort of assistance you know thank you so much for watching guys yeah. you know guys i love it so much when you guys like suggest topics because i'm just like okay i can do that for you i can do that so what is suggesting like this was a really great video and it was suggested by one of my peoples here in the comment section i wonder what i read your comments so if you write in your comments so you guys need to you know get the engagement guys get right um so thank you so much for watching guys uh remember to subscribe remember to comment remember to engage with me you know whether it's on this platform on youtube i'm also happy to always just respond to your messages and my dms you know i love it i love getting feedback from you and i really 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 hope that you enjoyed this video